Good day, good day, great tens. And uh, once again, we're back together. Um, we are looking at circuits today. And if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family, right? And uh, you can also be part of our members, okay? And uh, where you can get also some valuable perks. All right, now I want to jump into circuits. Now, first of all, I want us to talk about potential difference, right? So we know that when we've got a circuit, uh, for instance, you know, we have something like this uh, and we want to first uh, just find out what each symbol actually stands for, right? So we know that this guy uh, is called a cell, right? So what a cell does is that it provides us with potential and uh, electrical potential. Uh, right. So what happens in this case is that we always have a positive side and a negative side. Now, according to conventional current, OK, which is just a decision that was made uh, by a, pun a bunch of scientists. OK, well, it was decided in this case that we will always take this side, the positive side as a side where we've got greater potential. Right. So in this case, there's greater potential here. OK. And there is less of electrical potential on this side, okay? Uh, Symbol-wise, that's what it means. And so what happens is that current will always flow from the positive to the negative side, from the side where we've got greater potential uh, to where we have lesser potential. Now, I want you to think of it this way, right? If you were to take an object and place it on an incline, Right. So if you think about it, we've got greater potential energy on this side. OK, so you say you take a wheel and you put it there. And what happens in this case? The wheel will actually go down. OK, from the part where there is greater potential energy. OK, uh, to the side where there is lesser potential energy. All right. So in this case, we're looking at current flowing, right? So we're looking, I'm going to define all of that. So you're looking at electrons flowing in this case uh, from the side, flowing all the way to that side. And the flow of charge, the flow of electrons, we refer to that as current. OK, right. Now, we also have another device here called a resistor. I'm going to call it RD, right? So uh, what a resistor does it is that it resists current from flowing, right? So this is called a resistor. But in the process of resisting current from flowing, uh, what it does is that it changes, okay, uh, the potential, OK, right. So it changes the energy between two points. OK, so suppose we say this is point A and point uh, B. So it will change the energy between point A. Right. So electrons on this side have got a greater potential. Let's say on that side, have got a lesser potential um, in this case. So that potential energy change in this case. Um, right would cause now remember energy cannot be created or destroyed but it can be transformed from one form to another so let's say this resistor could be a stove it could be an iron it could be anything that we utilize it could be a light bulb right uh, anything that we utilize to convert electrical energy to some other type of energy right so now what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about, uh, um, you know, uh, voltage, right? So we said in this case, when we talk about voltage, right, we are talking about electrical potential. So I want you to think of this uh, situation right here, right, where we've got a potential between two points. And so um, when we've got greater potential and lesser potential, in this case, we would always have uh, you know, something being able to move from greater potential to lesser potential. So by definition, when we talk about voltage, right, we talk about the amount of work done per unit charge, right? Or we can say in this case, it is the difference in energy, right, per unit charge between two points. Okay, so I want you to remember uh, this um, 
you know, this formula uh, so that we are able to use it a little later on, right? So in this case, we said, all right, once we've got a voltage, okay, or once we are supplied with a voltage, what happens is that now we have current being able to flow, right? But what is current, okay? So we say by definition current, we use the symbol I for current, okay? We say current is the rate of flow of charge. So in this case, it's going to be uh, uh, the amount of charge that flows divided by the time. So we, we say that current is the rate of flow of charge. I remember when I was taught this equation, they call it the quit equation, right? So if you think about it, in this case, Q is equal to I times T. And so as a result, when we make I the subject of the formula, then you'll have Q, uh, sorry, uh, that is Q uh, divided by the change in time. Okay, so current is the rate of flow of um, uh, charge. So remember, the moment we've got higher potential and lesser potential, what begins to happen? Electrons are able to flow, right? Okay, so in this case, what we do <clears throat> is that we can actually put a device, right? A resistor. We said a resistor could represent any device, right? So we said it could be a light bulb. Um, it could be, uh, you know, a stove. It could be any device that we can use to convert electricity to, um, uh, to other types of energy. So what a resistor does is that it will convert the, the energy that is supplied in by the electron, right? It will convert it to some other type of energy. So if it was a light bulb, it will convert it to light energy. Or, uh, you know, if it's a stove, it will, con it will convert it to heat and so on and so forth. All right. Now, without any further ado, ladies and gents, so we talk about Ohm's law, right? Now, what Ohm's law... Uh, governs in this case is you know it's the principle of uh, electricity and I'm, I'm going to explain it what ohm's law simply states is that the current across a conductor right is directly proportional to the potential difference right so remember so current right the amount of uh, current that flows is directly proportional to the voltage that is supplied, right? So currently, uh, uh, the current is directly proportional to the potential difference, provided that temperature remains constant, right? So now when we put it as an equation, right, we say, well, in this case, I is equal to V over R, all right? So provided that temperature uh, remains constant. So for the most part of what we are going to be doing in circuits, we are going to be using what we call ohmic conductors, okay? Uh, conductors, all right? And what are ohmic conductors? Well, these are conductors that obey Ohm's law, right? So these are conductors that do not uh, change in temperature as you use them, all right? We know that uh, in real life, okay, it's not possible to have... Uh, ohmic conductors, well, we can try as much as possible, um, but in this case, in real life, uh, you know, conductors do actually generate some heat at some point, okay? Right, but for, uh, you know, for the purposes of what we're doing, we're going to be using what we call ohmic conductors. Now, ladies and gents, I don't want to uh, stretch this too much, right? I want us to get right into the gist of things, right? So, we're going to be looking at, uh, for today, resistors that are said to be in series. Now, I'm going to explain that, okay, as much as I possibly can. Right, so let's take, okay, maybe let's add in another resistor just to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, right. So, if we're looking at a circuit, all right, so... In this case, what you are going to see me do is always try to trace the path that electrons are always going to be taking. So in actual fact, I am going to be tracing the resistance path, 
right? Or, or rather, the, the current path. So, we know that we take current from greater potential to lesser potential. And in this case, what happens? The moment we've got greater potential, we know that current is going to flow from the point of greater potential. So, there it is. There are our electrons flowing, right? Look at this. All the electrons are going to flow through resistor R1, right? And all the electrons are going to uh, flow through resistor R2, right? And again, let's call this resistor R3. All the electrons are going to flow through resistor R3, right? Now, it means that <clears throat> when we've got a current that is flowing through all those resistors, well, we say that in this case, those resistors are said to be connected in series, right? How do we note resistors that are connected in series? We say, note one, once again, okay, these are resistors uh, that have the same current flowing across them, right? So what do we uh, uh, know? Well, with series uh, resistors, we know that first of all, current is the same, okay? So current is the same, okay? And then secondly, what do we know? All right, we know that they are potential dividers. I want you to stay with me, ladies and gents. So they are voltage dividers. So uh, they divide the voltage, right? So we know in this case that once we are supplied, now I want you to note, I'm going to introduce something here, which is what we call a voltmeter. What a voltmeter does is that it will... Uh, give us a uh, the potential difference between two points it will give us a reading you know of voltage uh, between any two particular points now uh, i'm going to teach you uh, as we go along you know the secret behind circuits okay so stay with me all right now i want you to please note in this case suppose i put a voltmeter here on resistor r1 let's call it v1 Let's put another one here across the voltage V2, uh, R2, which is V2. And of course, another one across the resistor R3. Let's call it V3, right? Now, in this case, we say that when we are supplied with a potential, with the amount of energy, the battery will always provide us or supply us with an amount of energy, right? So what happens when resistors are in series, they will divide that energy. They will divide that potential, okay? They will divide the voltage. But how do they divide the voltage? They will divide the voltage proportionally, okay? So they divide the voltage proportionally. And what does that mean? It means the bigger the resistor, right? the more voltage it will have across it. So just for argument's sake, so let's say this is a 4 ohm resistor, this is a 12 ohm resistor, and this is a 6 ohm resistor, right? So if you look at those three resistors, which one is the biggest resistor? It's, the, it's R2, the 12 ohm resistor. So with R2 being the biggest, what it will do is that most of the voltage, right, that is supplied by the battery will actually be across V2, okay? So we know that it divides voltage and it divides voltage proportionally. All right, now here's another thing. We know that in this case, the voltage that is supplied by the battery, so V in this case, right, which is the voltage supplied by our battery, will be equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3, right? So in this case, it means that if I take uh, the sum of uh, the voltages across each resistor, it should give me the total external resistor. I'm going to call this V external for the purposes uh, of, uh, you know, later introducing the internal resistance, okay? Right, now, um, then the last thing that we want to mention about resistors in series, right? I want you to note, ladies and gents, that we can actually 
take the circuit and simplify it. You'll see that all the time. We'll always be talking about what we call the equivalent resistance, right? So um, I want you to think of it, you know, um, when you take um, the electricity that is, that's utilized by one household, what we are doing is that we are simply taking that household as being just one big resistor, right? We're not looking at the fact that they're using the iron, the kettle, you know, the stove, everything that uh, uses, uh, uses up electricity, right? So in this case, what's going to happen? We're going to have, um, uh, you know, just one resistor, in this case, re representing what uh, all, all of our resistors combined. Now, I want you to note, let's call this R series, right? So whenever you've got resistors in series, to get the equivalent resistance, it will always be the sum of your resistors that are in series. Remember, we are adding resistors where we know that the same current flows across them, right? Now, what does this mean, ladies and gents? It means that I can redraw the circuit in a simplified manner, right? And the simplified manner is that instead of having those three resistors, I can have this one resistor called RS, R series. But what is RS? It is the sum of all the resistors in our circuit, right? Now, ladies and gents, I want you to please listen carefully, right? So we know that total current was flowing across our, our resistors, the same current there, same current there, it was flowing across all our resistors. Once I combine all of my resistors in series, then I know it would be the same current that flows through that equivalent resistance there, right? So in this case, I know that it's the same current. So let's call that current I total. So in this case, it would mean that I total would actually be passing across RS. Now, what's important is that remember we had those resistors, uh, right? And uh, each one had its own voltage. Now, what would be the voltage across our uh, equivalent resistor, right? It would be the total voltage that is supplied by your battery in this case. So remember, you've made it into one, right? So it means all of those uh, voltages in this case are combined in this one resistor. So we know in this case, I'm going to have V external over there, right? Now, I promised you that I'm going to give you this, the secret or, you know, uh, the code behind circuits, right? So remember how this works is that you always use a voltage with its corresponding resistor, okay? So look at this. If I were to use voltage V2, what is voltage V2 measuring across, right? It is measuring across only the resistor R2. So anytime I use this, res this voltage here, right, I should use it with its corresponding resistance. Okay, right. Of course, if I were to use the voltage V3, in this case, what is it measuring across? It is measuring across that resistor R3 there, right? So in this case, voltage with its corresponding resistance, right? So at, uh, in this case, it would be resistor R3. So when I use, right, Ohm's law, I is equal to V over R, note that when I use a volt, a voltage, right? I will always use it with its corresponding resistance. And why is that important? Now think about it. When I look at the voltage, say for instance, the voltage V, right? Okay, so in this case, this is the voltage across our, uh, our, our voltmeter, right? The question is, what is that voltage reading, right? So, it is giving us the value of the voltage across our battery, right? Remember, a battery is a, uh, you know, cells. Once I, I put cells together, they give me a battery, right? So in this case, it gives me the voltage across my, res, uh, my voltmeter, right? But the question is, what it is the voltmeter 
I mean, what is the, uh, um, you know, my battery supplying? Okay. It is supplying the entire circuit. Okay. So when I use that voltage there, this will be the voltage across all my resistors combined. Okay. So in this case, if I'm going to use voltage V, which we called external voltage, right? So in this case, it would be our external voltage. Which one am I going to use it with? It is going to be used with R external, which means the sum of my resistors or rather the equivalent resistance of my circuit. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. All right. So what we're going to do is that we're going to jump into some examples that we're going to do together. All right. Let's get started with our very first example. Right. So we given there, they say to us, we've got three resistors, uh, which are five ohms, 10 ohms and 25 ohms, respectively, that are connected in series to an 80 volt source. Right. They want us to calculate uh, the equivalent resistance uh, of the circuit. Now, first of all, what I'd like for us to do is just look at what's happening in the circuit, right? So we know we'll have the positive side from the battery, we'll have the negative side, and we know that current always flows from the positive to the negative side, right? So we know that uh, uh, total current would come out from the battery. In this case, it would flow through the 5 ohm resistor, through the 10 ohm, through the 25 ohm. So in that case, we know that they are connected in series. Why? Because the same current flows across all of them, right? So now we know how do we get equivalent resistance when we've got resistors in series, right? So we know for number one, we're going to simply say, well, our series that's going to be R1 plus R2 plus R3 because we've got resistors, three resistors, right? So that will be 5 plus 10 plus 25. And in this case, that would give us 40 ohms. All right. So we know that our external resistance would be 40 ohms. So that means that what you can simply do is just replace that uh, those three resistors with just one resistor whose resistance is 40 ohms uh, in this case, right? All right, so that would be what our circuit would look like. But we know within that resistor, the same current still would pass, uh, you know, through that resistor, uh, the same current that would be, um, you know, passing across each individual resistor, right? All right, so the next question, they say to us, uh, calculate the current that flows through the circuit. Now, I want you to note, we are going to use Ohm's law, but we're going to check first. We're given a voltage value, right? And which voltage value are we given? We're given the voltage across the battery, right? So in this case, we know that the voltage across the battery, right? The battery actually supplies all our resistors, isn't it? So we might as well say, look, we had a voltage that is provided here by the battery, but what is it supplying? It's supplying all our resistors. It's supplying our external uh, resistor, which is in this case, the 40 ohm resistor, right? So let's answer that. We know that I, let's call it I total, okay? The total current, and you'll see why later on uh, when we do resistors in parallel, right? So this is going to be, our external voltage, meaning our total voltage that is supplied by the battery, right, divided by, in this case, our total resistance or our equivalent resistance, uh, we called it R series in this case. It's always good uh, to write down those uh, subscripts so that you are able to follow, you know, uh, the person that's also marking is able to follow what exactly you are doing, right? So this is going to be, we said that's 80 volts. That was supplied by the battery and our series resistor in this case was 40 ohms and you can see how that will give you two amperes of current okay right so i hope that makes sense remember right when it comes to ohm's law you can also use that triangle right so we say v is equal to i multiplied by r 
This time we're looking for current, so this will be V over R. If I was looking for resistance, in this case, uh, it would be V over I. But if I was looking for voltage, we, we always say I multiplied by R. All right, I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. So um, let's go to the third question. They say calculate the potential difference across each resistor, right? Now, remember, with resistors in series, we know that that current that was passing through the 40 ohm resistor, the total current, would be the same current that is flowing across our individual resistors, right? So in this case, what we can simply do, let's first find the voltage across uh, the 5 ohm resistor, okay? So that would be the total current multiplied by our resistor, which is the 5 ohm resistor, okay? Um, if you don't mind, let's call them, let's give them names, R1, R2, and R3. It makes it easier for us to... So that would be multiplied by R1, okay? So in this case, that would be 2 multiplied by, um, you know, uh, the resistor, which is 5. That would give us 10 volts, right? And we can go for the second one, the voltage across our 10 ohm resistor, right? Okay, that's going to be I total multiplied by R2. So that would be 2 multiplied by 10, and that would be 20 volts. Now note, remember we said that the voltage across uh, each resistor, or rather they divide voltage proportionally, meaning the bigger the resistor, the bigger the voltage across it. Look at that. The voltage across the 5 was 10. And the voltage across the 10 is 20. So it shows you that voltage increases with an increase in resistance, right? Okay, so let's take the last one, which is the 25 ohm. Okay, so that would give us uh, I total multiplied by R3. So this would be 2 times 25. Okay. Right, our uh, R3 is 25 ohms, and so in this case, that would give us 50 volts, okay? Right, one thing that I want you to note, ladies and gents, right, you remember we said the external voltage must be equal to the sum of the voltages across your uh, individual resistors. So look at that. If we take V external as being the voltage across R1 plus the voltage across R2, plus the voltage across R3, it must give us that V external back, right? So that would be 10 plus 20 plus 50. And guess what? That would give us 80 volts. I know this wasn't asked, but uh, I was just showing you uh, for the sake of uh, just remembering that, right? That once you get all the voltages across your individual resistors, it must equal the external voltage okay right now let's take on the next question okay they say to us the amount of charge that flows through the 10 ohm resistor in two minutes okay now remember when we are talking about charge right we said there is a way for us to calculate charge right and how do we calculate charge right you remember our quit equation that's I multiplied by the change in time, right? So in this case, do we know uh, the amount of charge that would be passing across, um, you know, so when we talk about the, the, uh, the, the resistors, we know the amount of current that is passing through each resistor, right? And we want to know also in two minutes, right, how much charge would pass through there. So we know... Our total current is 2, uh, um, you know, 2 amperes, right, multiplied by the time. Now, please, I want you to note, ladies and gents, whenever we refer to time uh, in this equation, all right, or in physics in, in its totality, we always use time in seconds, right? So in this case, what it simply means is that when I measure that time, they said in two minutes, but how many seconds are there in a minute? It's 60 seconds. So in this case, I'm simply going to say, well, um, each minute has got 60 seconds in it. 
And how many minutes do I have? I've got two minutes. So in this case, that's two times 60. All right. So to calculate the amount of charge that is in there, right? So that's two times 60, which is 120 multiplied by two uh, in this case, which is going to be 240 coulombs of charge, right? So that is the amount of charge that is passing through the 10 ohm uh, resistor, right? So now, finally, uh, they ask us uh, the final question. They say the amount of energy that is converted by the 10 ohm resistor in two minutes, okay? Right, so in this case, we want the amount of energy, so we can simply say, well, we know that energy would be equal to voltage times charge. Remember, we said voltage is the work done uh, per unit charge, right? So this is where we got this equation from. When we make, make uh, energy the subject of the formula, then we've got voltage in this case. Now, what is the voltage across our uh, 10 ohm resistor? You remember we got that there, right? We said that's 20 volts, right? So this is going to be 20 volts multiplied by the charge that passes through the 10 ohm resistor. We've already found that to be um, at 240. So that would be 240. And so in this case, we're going to say, well, this is going to be 4,800 coulombs of charge that are passing through that there. All right, ladies and gents, I hope that makes perfect sense, right? And of course, we're going to be looking at some more questions uh, on series circuits, all right? So look out for the next video, right? I'll be doing some more, um, you know, questions on, you know, um, resistors in series and of course, looking at some more complicated questions. Otherwise, ladies and gents, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.